So, uh, hello and welcome everyone to the webinar titled uh, Druid on Kubernetes, Autoscaling and Dependency Management Using QDB. So, uh, I'm Tapatit Chandrapal. Um, I'm a software engineer at AppScore and currently working in our QDB project. Um, I specifically work on the development of development and improvement of um, Apache Druid uh, database support in QDB. So uh, in today's webinar, we are going to see auto scaling and how how KubeDB actually manages the dependencies of uh, Druid. So without further delay, let's get started with the presentation. So uh, this is the table of contents of today's webinar. At first, we are going to look at uh, what is Druid. Um, like we are going to get a basic idea of how um, how and what Druid is, and after that, we are going to see the Druid's architecture. And uh, um, after that, we are going to see the um, how KubeDB actually manages the Druid cluster and uh, how it uh, do what it what it does the best. And after that, uh, um, we're going to see more of uh, of how how you can use KubeDB to manage your uh, Druid cluster and uh, um, including it dependencies. And uh, um, after 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 deploying the Druid database, we are going to uh, you uh, see the compute and storage auto scaling uh, how how it actually works, um, and then we are going to see a uh, demo of how you can actually deploy a Druid auto scaler, uh, Druid auto scaler to scale your Druid cluster. And at the, at the end of the presentation or webinar, we are going to have a QA session where you can ask any of your queries about the webinar or like Druid and KubeDB in general. So yeah, at first, uh, let's see what is what Druid is and what it what it do the best. And the first feature that I'm going to talk about of Druid is high performance and real time analytics database. So uh, Druid is a high performance real time analytics database uh, that deliver sub-second queries on streaming and batch data at scale and under load. So uh, most often read powers use cases where real-time ingestion, fast query performance, and uh, high uptime are very important. Then uh, it's elastic architecture. So uh, we may be um, the users of Druid already know that Druid has a very elastic architecture, which means the, the components that Druid have are, are very loosely coupled. And uh, it has separate components for like injection queries, orchestration, and uh, with external dependency deep storage. Uh, so uh, it actually helps it uh, to scale up and down very, very quickly. Then we have uh, real-time or batch ingestion. Uh, Druid has support for both uh, real-time or batch, uh, batch ingestion. So um, ingested data that we ingest, like, it doesn't matter if it is uh, real time or batched batch data, it is actually uh, immediately available after, for querying right after we ingest it. And after that, we have columnar storage, storage format. So um, Druid is actually a col uses columnar oriented storage. Uh, this means that it only loads the exact columns needed for a particular query. This actually improves uh, speed for queries quite a bit. Then we have SQL support. Uh, re developers and analysts can easily use the use the familiar SQL API. I think this is one of the most uh, uh, most impressing uh, feature of Druid. So yeah, let's uh, uh, get to get to the architecture. Druid, as I have said all earlier, that Druid have, has a very distributed and elastic architecture. So um, it is actually very cloud friendly and uh, very easy to operate. So um, the why what it does is that that th this design actually includes includes enhanced fault tolerance and uh, so an outage of one component does not actually um, affect uh, in the other other components immediately. So um, as we can see in the architecture in the diagram that we have uh, several types of services. Um, so if namely uh, it has three kind of server, one is master, query, and data server. In the data master server, it has two components, uh, coordinator and overlock, two kind of nodes. And in in query server, it has uh, two nodes, router and broker. In data, it has middle manager and historical. So um, and and as we can see at the at the uh, downside, at the at the uh, bottom side of the um, 
diagram that with uh, three external dependencies. So it does not actually come along with these external dependencies. So you have to, if you are, uh, let's say, deploying uh, Druid on your own, then you have to manage these three dependencies on your own. First, you have to deploy this, these uh, components and then um, like you have to uh, uh, give the configuration of these uh, dependencies to Druid and Druid will use them to connect to your uh, dependencies and use them. But uh, with KubeDB, uh, we are actually managing this uh, metadata storage, which is basically MySQL and Postgres and Zookeeper uh, from our side. So it actually simplifies the Druid provisioning. As a result, uh, what it does is if you deploy a Druid YAML and uh, and the kubedb operator will internally deploy and uh, a, a, a mysql cluster and if you mention it will deploy a postgres as well uh, alongside a zookeeper cluster and after after these two things are ready the druid cluster is going to get provisioned and uh, deep storage for deep storage you have to uh, use a um, use a s3 s3 bucket or similar kind of stuff object storage from any cloud so yeah um if we talk about the master server quite a bit for for something, um, uh, the master server actually manages data ingestion and availability, and it is responsible for starting new ingestion jobs and coordinating availability on of data on the data server. So, uh, if we talk talk about the coordinators, coordinator services actually watches over the historical. Uh, coordinator actually watches over the historical services on the data servers. They are responsible for assigning segments. As we know that Druid actually inserts data as as um, at partitioned in a, a, as segments. So it actually uh, loads the segments into the historical. And for um, Overlord, actually Overlord uh, watches over the middle managers uh, on the data servers and manages the whole ingestion process into the in, into Druid. So uh, they're responsible for assigning ingestion tasks uh, to middle manager and for coordinating the seg segment publishing. And uh, <clears throat> if we talk about the data server, uh, there are two kinds of data servers. The first one is historical. Historical actually handles the storage and querying on historical data. And uh, uh, historical actually downloads the segment from deep storage. So the, the data we ingest into the Druid cluster, it is actually stored in the deep storage and the metadata of the data is stored in the data storage and uh, what what happens is when we query something the, the the necessary segment is get get the necessary segment gets loaded from the deep storage into the historical and after that we can we can uh, we can query query it uh, so for middle manager uh, middle manager service actually handles the ingestion of new data into the cluster so uh, they are responsible for reading from external data sources and publishing new uh, Druid segments. And in, in case of query server, as the name suggests that, that uh, it actually responsible for handling the queries. So um, if we talk about the broker service, broker service actually receives uh, queries from external clients and forward those queries to um, queries to data servers. Like let the, we, we query the broker server and the query goes to the, um, and, and the broker uh, uh, like collects data from the historical and this was the result of the query. And in case of a router, router actually provides a, a unified gateway uh, in front of broker overlap and coordinators so can actually access these three um, components using the router Router is basically it also comes uh, comes up with a um, uh, wave interface so we can actually use that to ingest data or or manage druid cluster so um that's all about the architecture i think you get a basic idea of of the how distributed and elastic the druids architecture is now uh we are going to see see the um how druid it actually uh, how kubedb actually uh, provisions druid clusters so um the the kubedb provisioner operator watches over the druid uh, custom resource so when a user creates a druid custom resource the um, the provisioner operator actually uh, watches that and he uh, and it um it creates the druid cluster alongside with the uh, stateful uh, pet sets or or services and secrets and uh, like we have said earlier the dependencies matter the storage and zookeeper it also also actually um the deploys those those two though like like the basic kind of metadata storage in case of if you if you do not mention anything it is going to deploy mysql but if you um if you mention postgres then it is going to do that and also zookeeper 
and uh, uh, if uh, there are three kind of uh, deletion policy for the for your read cluster uh, uh, there these are delete halt uh, wipe out and do not terminate so if you halt it um, keep the deletion policy as a halt in in that case uh, the secrets and pvcs is going is not going to be deleted and when you recreate the read cluster uh, the new cluster is going to use that and if you give the do not, um, termination policy or deletion policy as do not terminate in that case in this in that case the read uh, the kubedb man operator will um, will reject your uh, request if you want to delete it uh, so yeah and the, and in case case of a wipeout uh, in that case uh, the read cluster is, is, is the, all the components of the read is going to be wiped out and everything is going to be deleted and in case of uh, delete termination policy, if the termination policy is set to delete, in that case uh, only the secrets will be kept uh, intact, and uh, and if you uh, you can actually use that secret to recreate that read cluster. So um, if you want to install um, KubeDB, you can just go to our website and check. So you you can just use this Helm command to install um install this uh, read uh, cluster in 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 that case we have to also mention the feature gates as as read as well so this is a sample yaml which we are going to use um in the yaml we can see that the kind is set to read uh, you if you um and the and the name is also uh, read um and the namespace is demo and uh, you can see the in the spec section we have deep storage topology and version in in case of deep storage we, we can see that we have given a a secret reference so this secret is basically a secret that contains the configuration file or connection information for the read cluster to connect to the deep storage so you um have to have to deploy the secret with the uh, with your uh, with our with your necessary uh, configuration uh, so that the read becomes available like username password connection you were so that read cluster is able to connect sorry connect to that um connect to your deep storage and that in in our case we are going to mention it as s3 you can also um choose other types if you if it it if you, if you prefer anything else and in case of topology the um like we have seen the architecture uh here um the in the architecture we can see that there is six nodes uh, so in 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 that case uh, the uh, the no four nodes that, uh, that is coordinate or broker middle management historicals are are necessary nodes are required nodes which which you don't have to mention and the read QuickDB operator will automatically deploy those and uh, for the router and overload you have to mention in the YAML that you want you want those uh, those nodes as well so in our case we are um, actually mentioning in the topology that uh, the we want router with replica one. So um, I didn't mention anything else because uh, the QuickDB operator will take care of those and uh, deploy one replica of each of the components and in in our case um, you can there are plenty of uh, options available for versions uh, so um, in our case we are going to use the 28.0.1 uh, um, uh, version of the read, uh, read database so um, now we are going to uh, move to the terminal and uh, deploy the read cluster uh, so as you can see, I have a um a menu uh, um a bucket running in our menu pod running uh, running already. So this uh, pod is actually for the um S three uh, bucket that we mentioned. So I have created a secret. So here you can see we have uh, deep storage config secret. So we are going to uh, if you if you uh, see the secret. So um this is basically the secrets um you you need to mention your necessary information in the in the um, in the string data that we have and deploy the uh, secret um uh, without the without the necessary configuration so in our case uh, we have we have all the data in the secret and we are going to use uh, this yaml to deploy it and read webinar so we have reference 
mentions the if storage config secret here and uh, mention the type as S3. So let's just go ahead and apply the read wave minar YAML. And uh, you should be able to see when I apply it that the read operator So as you can see, the read operator has started uh, provisioning the read cluster. And as I have mentioned earlier that uh, without specifying anything, it is actually taking care of the dependencies. So it is uh, with the with the read instance, it is going to deploy a um, Zookeeper and a MySQL with the read webinar uh, 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 read cluster. So at first, uh, what what is happening is that uh, read uh, is actually provisioning uh, the Zookeeper pods. So when they becomes ready, the MySQL and the uh, Zookeeper, uh, you will see that uh, the pods of like coordinator and uh, and uh, overload and stuff like that they are going to come up. So um, in the meantime, let us uh, look at the uh, as you can see in the log that. And read is actually uh, waiting for the dependencies to be ready. So when the MySQL database is, is going to be ready, uh, the Druid will uh, go ahead and uh, deploy the pods. So in the meantime, let's just look at, look at the compute autoscaling uh, uh, diagram. So um, autoscaling is basically, uh, you can use uh, Druid autoscaler to, um, to autoscale your resources. So, um, auto scaling process is actually um, computer auto scaling process is consists of all the uh, some some steps. At first, the user creates a read auto scale uh, read custom resource, and uh, kubedb provisioner actually watches that read resource. And uh, when when the uh, read is deployed, it is going to uh, um, read is applied. It is going to deploy that read cluster, and. Uh, <clears throat> It is going to deploy. It it is going to create the required number of uh, read and related uh, related necessary stuffs like secrets, pet sets, services, and also uh, the external dependencies. So, uh, in order to set up auto scaling of the various uh, read services like coordinator, broker, historical of the read cluster, the user creates a read auto scaler. Like we have seen that after deploying the read, uh, it is going to deploy read auto scaler. So uh, the read uh, auto scaler operator actually the it it also comes with the kubedb operator. So it is going to watch the read auto scaler and when is when when it actually um sees that uh, a auto scaler object has been applied, uh, it what it is going to do is it is going to generate recommendation using the modified version of Kubernetes official recommender. It is going to use the um uh, vertical Pod autoscaler uh, for different components of the database uh, as specified in the Android autoscaler. So if the generated recommendation doesn't match with the, let's say it, 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 it is saying that the, the database actually ha having a high load and it is it needs to be scaled, uh, like it, it needs to in increase the CPU or memory, uh, it is going to, what it is going to do is it is going to apply or create a read op ops request uh, automatically. And uh, the, uh, the uh, kubedb ops manager operator actually watches uh, over the uh, read ops request so what read ops manager actually do drew is actually it, it um what, what uh, ops request do, do is that it actually um responsible for uh, for scaling your database in case it, it can be it can actually increase your cpu or memory so with the specified like with the recommended uh, cpu and memory a read ops request is applied and ops manager operator sees that and uh, it actually scales the pit set port and uh, it increases the CPU and memory uh, mentioned in the ops request. So you will see that the Druid pod, Druid cluster is going to get updated. So uh, before seeing how Druid auto scales its compute resources, we are going to see, um, we are going to at first see uh, what what is happening to our Druid cluster. So as you can see, the uh, the after after our um, uh, dependencies, Zookeeper and MySQL becomes ready. The Druid cluster actually uh, provisions its necessary components like broker, um, a coordinator, historical middle manager, and also as we have mentioned in the YAML, it is it has also deployed a router. So uh, if we see the services that comes up with this thing,
so um these are the these are the um uh, these are the services that you can use to access that read notes um we have a broker coordinator and router uh, pod to access the read database and this these services are actually coming up from the uh, mysql cluster that has that the kubedb has provisioned as the reads and reads uh, external dependency and uh, uh, we can see that that is same for the zookeeper as well so um let's just go ahead and access the read cluster uh, read ui so for that i'm going to port forward the uh, read router If we now hit the 88 port, we have to provide the credential. You can find your credential from, from here. If you um, see the secret, let's just get the secret first. Uh, that read uh, cube deep operator will uh, will deploy a uh, will deploy a admin credential for the Druid cluster. You can use that to to get your username and password. You can also uh, mention your your um, custom uh, auth secret as well. In that case, KubeDB will use that to deploy the Druid cluster. So um, the username is always uh, admin, and you are going to give the password. So as we can see, uh, Druid, the Druid is actually running. We are actually accessing this route outer part of read and it is actually up and running uh, seamlessly now let's just go ahead and provision some data in it so um read comes up with some example data we are going to load load that so uh yeah go ahead and access the wikipedia edits data now as you can see read <clears throat> the the ingestion has started and it is in running phase so we just have to wait for a few uh minute yeah it is it is getting going it is it is it has succeeded so if we if we see that we have uh, now we have two resources one is wikipedia and another is kubedb so data source so kubedb data source is basically uh, used for uh, for uh, kubedb operator to check the um the if if if, if the, it is able to write read and write the data from the uh, read cluster so it is it is actually using the health check so if we go ahead and query the data from the uh, wikipedia let's just select a query we can see that we can query uh, pretty easily from the read cluster. So uh, yeah, that's how you can use the read cluster. Uh, and uh, yeah, with, with just, just of a simple YAML, you can deploy that read cluster seamlessly and read will take care of all the dependencies that we have. So um, let's just um, continue. What we are going to do now is we are going to scale our uh, read cluster. So um, let's just get the port of the read cluster. If we see the coordinator port, we can see that um, it has the following resources. Uh, if we see the containers, it has a uh, limits of uh, one gigabyte, memory of one gigabyte, a request of one gigabyte, and this CPU of uh, 500M. So what we are going to do is we are going to scale this uh, memory and CPU, and uh, the read the KubeDB will automatically uh, automatically up update this uh, request and also the limit. So um, we are going to do that for two um, two uh, two nodes. That is coordinator. As an example, you can do it for whichever pod you want or whichever node you want. We are going to see for coordinator and historical. So if we see the historical pod. Uh, uh, we can see that it is actually, it has also the same CPU and memory. Uh, in the container section, the Druid container uh, has, has, um, has this, uh, the same 500M and uh, one gigabyte of uh, CPU and memory. And if we see the Druid, <clears throat> Read YAML of read. Uh, 
we can see that um, if we go to the historical, it is actually running with uh, uh, this, uh, sorry, this is init container and this is the main container. So it has 500 M and one gigabyte. And in case of a coordinator, it is actually, uh, it is also the same, uh, 500 M and one gigabyte. So let's let's go ahead and use um Druid Computer Auto Scaling to scale uh or Druid Computer Auto Scaler to scale the Druid uh, resources. So for that um let's at first look at the Druid Computer Auto Scaler YAML. So um as you can see the name of the kind of the uh, YAML is uh, Druid Auto Scaler and uh, it is uh, the name we have given the name as Druid Compute and it, it is going to be deployed in demo namespace and the the uh, the the Druid component or Druid uh, object that is going to uh, watch watch or scale is going to be Druid Web Miner as we have deployed the Druid cluster as the name uh, uh, name with Druid Web Miner. So you just have to mention your databases references name in this in this um, in this name section, and in the compute section we are going to. At first, we obviously we are going to have to mention the name of the type of the node. So we are going to scale the coordinate. Turn off automatically, and we have a pod lifetime three. And max allowed is is a uh, uh, thousand m and five gigabyte, and uh, resource difference percentage is twenty, and uh, the control resource is um, obviously we're going to control two resources, CPU and memory. So we have done the same for the historical nodes as well. So so when we are going to apply this YAML, what is going to happen is that uh, the kubedb operator uh, will see that the uh, Druid is uh, the the coordinator pod has only 500m, like we have seen earlier. It has 500m or um uh, or or uh, like it it is going to see this 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 specification that it has only one GB of memory and 500m of CPU. So uh, as we have mentioned that mean allowed is is more than that. So it is going to automatically set it to create an ops request and set it to 2 GB and 500 M. So um, let's go ahead and create the create the autoscaler. Okay, so uh, we have deployed the read autoscaler from using using this YAML. So uh, I, the, I have seen, shown you this YAML before and we have say, deployed this, this exact the same YAML. So uh, the Druid has started provision or st has has started watching or reconciling this uh, autoscaler. And uh, once it gets the recommendation, it is going to deploy the necessary uh, ops request. So in the meantime, let's go ahead and uh, see the uh, storage autoscaling. So um, if we look at the storage autoscaling, it is actually, uh, it actually uh, uh, manages the uh, PVCs of the mm -hmm. of the pods that 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 redeploys. So um, uh, to to scale your uh, pod, uh, PVCs up and down, you can use storage autoscaling. So uh, in the meantime, let's just see. Yeah, you can see that uh, Druid Auto Scaler has uh, has suggested the uh, has suggested, and and you can see that the historical and the historical port has already uh, already triggered and it is restarted, and uh, and it is it is actually successful. So if we go ahead and look at the historical port, we are going to see that. See that the resources, computer resources, has has uh, scaled. So if you see that uh, the uh, resources of the container has actually increased, as we have seen earlier, that it was it has memory of only one GB and five hundred M. Now it is scaled. Well, so uh, the Druid operator is uh, the the kubedb operator is taking care of your auto scaling. 
uh, auto scaling tasks tasks automatically and in the meantime you can also see that uh, as we have also uh, we have also mentioned the coordinator to scale the coordinator one uh, another ops request for coordinator has also been created and it is it is also in success phase and we can see that the coordinator pod has also been restarted it has started only 19 minutes uh, 19 second ago so if we get the coordinator yaml now we will should we should able be able to see the uh, memory and cpu to increase as well yeah you can see that it has it has increased so um that's how you can use your uh, com uh, compute auto scaling to scale your cpu and memory m m very easily using using kubedb auto scaler so um yeah it's it is a uh, you can in in case of let's say high load it is going to scale your um uh, scale your read uh, 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 plots vertically uh, and in case of um, let's say when, when when the database does not have that much of load in that case it is going to scale down and now we are going to see uh, the this resume the presentation uh, we have seen that uh, storage auto scaling is used to scale the uh, the the pvcs so uh, here the same type of um, working procedure actually happens so what happens is that at first the user like we have seen before, the creates a read cluster and the provisional operator watches that and creates the and read um, the necessary necessary uh, secret services and the external dependencies like metadata storage as uh, MySQL Postgres or Zookeeper. And uh, after that, when he needs to, uh, let's say, needs to auto scale his resources, he have to create a read auto scaler like we have seen before. So um, the auto scaler operator actually watches the read auto scaler resource similarly and uh, when it sees that it it's um, the um, it it watches over the persistent volume of the PVCs and when it sees that the um, the the user has uh, has more demand and the PVC needs needs to be scaled, it is going to uh, similarly going to create an ops request, uh, the storage ops request, and ops manager operator will get triggered and it will expand the persistent volumes and. Uh, and as a result, the expand you can you will see that your storage uh, the PBC let's say it had it had one GB one gigabyte of uh, persistent volumes. Now it is going to have um, had two GB or, or 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 the necessary amount of uh, storage that it needs. And uh, when uh, and and the and and the and the new read database is going to be updated. So um, you can use this YAML to deploy your uh, read storage autoscaler. Uh, so in this case, you can see that uh, oh, one thing I need to mention is that uh, as we have seen in the architecture, Druid has two data nodes. One is historical and another is middle manager. So uh, these two po uh, pods uh, or nodes have PVCs and other nodes, nodes does not actually need any, any PVCs. So um, in case of uh, storage autoscaling, in case of compute autoscaling, you can actually increase the CPU and memory of any um, any node that you want. But in case of in case of uh, storage auto scaling, it doesn't make sense to um, uh, create storage auto scaler for uh, other nodes. So uh, you uh, you have to only mention two kind of nodes. One is historical, another is middle manager. So um, here, here you can see the name and namespace of, of the auto scaler resource. And uh, similarly, as we have seen in the Computer to scaler, you have to mention the database reference. So here, our the name of the database is Druid Webinar, and in the storage section, um, you have to mention the name of the node. So in that in this case, it is going to be either historicals or or middle manager. So uh, expand there are two types two kind of expansion mode. One is online and offline. You can um uh, uh, you can like in case of online the pods does not get restarted the pvc is expanded automatically on the fly but in case of offline the pods get uh, restarted and the trigger is on and you have to mention the user's threshold like how much uh, let's say you have uh, one gigabyte of uh, pvc so uh, how much of the let's say you have if you mention it that 50 percent then in that case uh, it is going to trigger on when you have consumed 500 megabytes of data uh, megabytes of pvc so Users threshold actually mentions that you have to you can mention your uh, like when to trigger the how much um, when to trigger the um, auto scaling uh, like how, after how much consumption and scaling threshold is actually used to how much um, how how much we should scale your 
um, uh, PVC. Let's say if you mentioned uh, fifty percent for one GB, in that case, uh, it it is going to scale it to uh, one point five gigabyte because uh, fifty percent of one gigabyte is five hundred megabytes. So yeah, it's is going to do that. Well, you can use the uh, uh, Druid Auto Scaler uh, storage uh, storage Auto Scaler similarly as we have seen uh, shown you earlier. As a computer, so you just have to apply it, and it is going to scale as needed on when the PVC is consumed. So yeah. Now, uh, as we have seen that these are the upcoming features, um, Druid Backup and Restore. We are going to have a release very soon, and in that in that release, we are going to have backup restore of uh, Druid cluster using uh, in the kubedb you can usually do that and after that we are also going to include tls in the uh, uh, we are going to deploy uh, have have feature where you can just mention uh, to enable tls and the druid we cluster will uh, will be will be secured and uh, tls secured so yeah that's all from my side and um, if you have any questions you can ask ask me now I think uh, we don't have any any more questions. So, uh, thank you um, everyone for joining. And uh, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, know more about our our products, you can shoot us an email at the hello at the rate of dot com or check out our um Q, uh, our uh, X profile or you can go to our website cubedb dot com and also check out our deposit in github so uh, thank you all again for joining and uh, don't forget to check out the cubedb's website and the social media platform